The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Morning Markets Kickoff with your host, Tommy O'Brien. Now, Tommy O'Brien. Good Friday morning, everybody. I'm Tommy O'Brien coming to you live from TFNN just after 9 a.m. Eastern time. We got non-farm payrolls, folks, for the month of September. Uh, a hot number. Unemployment rate actually dropping to 3.5 percent. That will be the headline on a lot of local news. Uh, headline news. We'll see what the headline is in terms of where this market goes at the end of the day. But we got quite a reaction right out of the gate. You have the S&Ps down 1.23 percent. Basically, we were coming into that number almost flat. Let's get the S&P print. You're talking about 3770. Uh, so, yeah, we actually caught a little bit of a lift in the final hour, I guess, coming into that number. But we're a solid. We were basically even at 8 in the morning. You drifted upward, and then you drop out of bed, man, to the tune of 60, 60 S&P points from 3770 to 3710 right now. The NASDAQ 100, you're off 1.83%. The Dow right now, off 1%. The Russell, off 1.3%. Crude. That pulls back as well. We hit $90 to the penny. Round numbers. Our man Basil Chapman loves those round numbers, man. He's up next, of course, with the Tiger Technicians Hour. Crude hits 90 on the dot. We pull back to 88.80, and we're back to about the $89 range for crude. Gold contract, we drop. We got some dollar action. We'll jump to that in a moment. That, of course, driving some of the commodity action this morning. Gold down about $17 at 1704. Gold continuing to struggle, man. You put that thing, let's put it on a weekly going all the way back. Talked about that consolidation area for some time, man. You did dip, dip below that level, slightly back above 1700, but a tough chart recently for the price of gold. Struggling yet again this morning, down about 17 bucks. Continued dollar strength, man. Tough for gold when you got continued dollar strength. And if you're looking for higher yields, folks, they're coming. We got the 10 year right now, down to another 18 ticks. So much for a bounce, folks. That's your weekly. Right? What happened to the bounce? All it is is a tail for this week. That tail of the tenure is all the way up to 113.30. We put it back to a 15 minute, and there's your drop off, man. Talk about getting a little bit out of whack with yields dropping lower. The tenure, folks, just dropped three, three full points. Yeah, two, two full points. No, three full points. Yeah, remarkable action. Uh, yeah, three full points is where it dropped on the 10-year as we have yields accelerating higher yet again today. We jump over to the volatility index. Boy, you know, it looked like that we had gotten a pretty considerable spike in the VIX. This is going back to, yeah, just this calendar year. I've talked about it many times in the program. Uh, seemed to be pretty symmetrical. That seems like it could have been a realistic VIX. Kind of pushing out all the market fear as we had the S&Ps bottoming and making new lows, Right. Uh, but we're going to stall a bit here with some new economic data that's going to drive the Fed. 75 basis points seems all but intact. But where do we go from here? I mean, the conversations I have with some of the guests I bring on, whether it's our man Kevin Hanks, Teddy Kegstat, we talked to on Wednesdays, right, is saying, what happens if we are where we are right now three months from now? Because, man, it just seems like we keep saying, OK, we're not there yet, but the data is going to come. And now it's that first it was the inflation is transitory, Right. First, it was, OK, wait for the data. It's transitory. It's going to you know, mediate itself when some of the supply chain issues, zero COVID policy policy in China taking place. When those things take care of themselves, inflation will take. And then it became, OK, that's not the case. So we're going to have a Fed. They're going to have to hike dramatically to get control of inflation. Here they go. They're going to begin. They begin in March. When's that going to start mattering? Well, it's going to matter soon. Don't worry. And guess what? What else did people say? They said, we're going to have some great comps coming into the end of the year because, boy, we already had inflation raging as we came into uh, maybe like late 2021, where we are right now, late 2022. We're now bumping up against comps that should be friendly on the CPI. So point being, again, we've transitioned from now it's the Fed's hiked, unemployment rates actually still dropping. Um, but now all the analysts talk is a very hopeful, in my opinion, okay, very hopeful way of saying, well, it's just a lag. Usually things take about six months. We're lining up on that six month area right now. Uh, and guess what? They could be right, folks, but they could certainly be wrong. 
And is the market pricing in that a year from right now, we're still dealing with rampant inflation to a degree the Fed's not comfortable with? Meanwhile, we're sitting at, at a terminal uh, rate that they've gotten us to of five, five and a half percent, maybe. Maybe they have to keep going. We have unemployment at 3.5 percent, man. Let's jump into some of the numbers. 263,000 jobs added pretty much in line. One number I saw was 255,000 expected. One number I saw earlier this morning was 260,000. Pretty much in line. Jobless rate falling to 3.5%. That's a participation deal. Uh, women, I'm reading about this morning, huge deal uh, in terms of participation rate coming out of the workforce. And yeah, I would say the data reaffirms traders' bets for another big Fed rate hike. And uh, this is the number I wanted to comment on real briefly. Uh, now, this is a great feed they have going on with Bloomberg. It's just a constant update since the numbers came out. So this is the smallest gain in payroll since April, but 263 is still much stronger than the longer term quote unquote trend. The number here, the US needs about 90,000 folks, okay? That is the new jobs in a month in order to absorb new entrants into the labor force. So that's the healthy ad, right? If you're at full employment, you should still be adding about 90,000 jobs a month to absorb new entrants into the labor force as the population grows, as the labor force grows. OK, we're well above that number. We have wages rising. There are components going on here which are not friendly to the Federal Reserve. And the fact that we have wages still rising. OK, that's going to be a component of this as well. And there's too much good stuff here to get into. We'll get into it throughout the program. One comment here. You have J.P. Morgan's Feroli saying yesterday, OK, inflation to stabilize. You need it around to stabilize around 2%, you need wage gains at around 3%. We're still pushing five. That's just one take, folks. But wage gains at 5%, it's still a big number, man. And you actually have the people who are job seeking, and that's I'm going to try and find this one that I had, because job seekers are the unemployed, right? That number is actually dropping in this report, folks. People who are seeking a job, the number of people seeking a job is actually dropping. I'll find the actually tidbit of it. Um, that's just the people who are unemployed. This is the unemployment report, right? That is the case. But when you think about it in that capacity, that's not what needs to be happening right now, folks. For The goal is you're supposed to have, right? What are you supposed to have? Less job openings and more people seeking jobs, okay? And that will allow companies not to have to raise wages to fill the vacant positions that they need or allow them to pay less for labor if there's more people seeking jobs and less jobs that are available. That is not what is happening. That's going to be a driving force. I was having a conversation with a friend yesterday, and here's the one I keep trying to wrap my brain around, folks, okay? You want inflation back to 2%, 3%, now, I know that the Fed looks at, you know, the personal consumption expenditure, the PCE. They look at this non-farm payroll number in pretty dramatic fashion, and consensus is they're going 75, no doubt about it, no matter what kind of CPI data we get from the month of September, okay? But what is going to happen when we go into all of next year? Is CPI going to be something that gets explained away, as in, I imagine CPI is going to be running hot for some time, folks. Shelter? I think shelter is what, one third of CPI or 30%, something like that. Shelter represents, I know, 40% of the core number. Those numbers are going to be around for a year or two, man. Rents are going up. Shelter is going up, folks, no matter how you look at it, okay? Whether it's a mortgage price going up, whether it's rental prices going up, even if we get a pullback, those numbers are going to persist, man. And uh, we're seeing it this morning, non-farm payrolls. And we'll see what happens, man. Rent. Rent is going to be an issue. Shelter going to be an issue. And we got issues in terms of an unemployment rate of 3.5%. Stay tuned, folks. We got a lot to talk about. We'll be right back in three minutes. Vista Gold owns and operates the largest undeveloped gold project in Australia, the Mount Todd Gold Project. Vista Gold just completed their feasibility study, resulting in a 7 million ounce gold reserve. Vista Gold has all major permits approved and has retained CIBC capital market assistance in evaluating alternatives and in completing an accretive transaction. Vista Gold trades on the NYSE American and TSX under the ticker symbol VGZ. Vista Gold, executing a strategy to create shareholder value. 
everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything, from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com, educating investors. Steve Rhodes started his trading career as a student almost 20 years ago, and the student has now become the master. Steve won the prestigious Timer of the Year Award in 2018 and barely missed that mark again in 2019, finishing at number two for the year. An amazing accomplishment. Steve Rhodes is committed to sharing his techniques and knowledge with anyone who wants to learn, and he shares his vast amount of trading knowledge every day in his Mastering Probability newsletter. Steve's award-winning newsletter, Mastering Probability, is delivered every trading day with updates throughout the afternoon. Sign up for Steve's market newsletter, Mastering Probability, and you'll receive access to seven of Steve's educational webinars absolutely free. At TFNN, all our newsletters come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, so you have absolutely nothing to worry about. Visit TFNN.com and try Mastering Probability 30 days risk-free today. TFNN, education investors. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. It's Non-Farm Payrolls Friday. We have an unemployment rate of 3.5%, folks, and we got the S&Ps down 38 points. They've been saying it, right? Good news is bad news. Bad news is good news. This is good news for the economy, man. We're at 265,000 jobs. We have an unemployment rate of 3.5%. And the market's saying that is not good news because the Federal Reserve does not want that, folks. Uh, Federal Reserve basically pricing in 73 basis points last time I checked. Uh, next month, basically a full pricing of the 75 going on for November. Then, remember, so they go 75 in November. They're expected to go 50 in December. And right now, they're only expecting about one quarter point, 0.25 basis points, uh, 25 basis points, I should say, next year. The worry is, what if they have to do more? I feel like there's a substantial risk to doing more right now. Like, you, you want to look at the symmetrical nature of those risks, right? What are the risks? What is priced in right now? What is priced in right now is about a point and a half more of the Fed hiking. Okay, that's 75, 50, and a quarter. What are the chances they do more? What are the chances they do less? What are the chances they do less? That chance is disappearing and is probably pretty close to zero. That's my opinion, right? What are the chances they do more? I'd say that chance is far above zero. Make sure you're considering those probabilities, folks, because I don't see that as a symmetrical risk in terms of where the risk is. The risk is inflation's running hot, unemployment's at 3.5%. What if the Fed has to do more next year than the market's thinking about? Because inflation will not get under control, man. I'd love to see uh, Chairman Powell this morning or get a glimpse into his conversations or his thinking. Uh, he might have a bit of a bit of sweat on his brow this morning with these numbers as they persist, to say the least. All right, jumping into some of the other numbers from those jobs reports. Now, where were the numbers? Leisure and hospitality was a big number there. 83,000 jobs left last month. That brings it back to the 6.7% unemployment level that was before pre-pandemic. Uh, the biggest laggard? 
mining and logging. Unemployment still down about 8% almost compared with where it was pre-pandemic. Now, here's a point I wanted to bring up. Alan Ruskin of Deutsche Bank did not read, I guess, uh, but he talked about something earlier in the week. And you have one of the editors at Bloomberg bringing it up. But an interesting tidbit of how things work. We know there is a lag, right? That's the tough part about all this, folks. There's a there's an there's a reasonable opinion that can be made for many different outcomes right now. Um, we know there's a lag. There is a lag. Of course there's a lag, right? But guess what? There's a lag on the other side, too. There's a lag of, of rental prices I've been talking about. That's a huge lag that's going to persist for inflation, okay? So there's, there's data everywhere here. Which one is the most influential? But the current lack of progress in slowing things down is not unusual. He found that in eight of nine significant hiking cycles going back to the 70s, the unemployment rate was actually lower one year after the Fed started hiking. Uh, and we are now seven months, I believe, past it. March, yeah, they started hiking in March. So we're about seven months out. So there is a lag, folks. Um, but boy, it is quite a number to make it through that number in terms of the lag and where we are. All right. Let's jump around a bit. AMD, uh, with their numbers last night, I was getting texts from my dad about AMD numbers last night. Not in the good way, man. Uh, AMD, jumping over to their chart. They're down about $3.50 this morning. They missed their numbers. Looks like demand drying up in a big way. Breath breathtaking drop in demand as recessions lose. Samsung and AMD numbers miss projections. Um, Taiwan Semiconductor, they buck the trend. But getting into the numbers, man, Samsung, 32% dive in operating income. AMD, yeah, they're going to miss the forecast by a billion dollars. That's the one that I got from my dad. Billion dollars with a B, folks. They're going to miss. This is what could really be a thorn in the market. When you talk about multiples, folks, the multiples are changing. You got chip companies missing their numbers by a billion dollars. Okay. Now, AMD stock, uh, it could be worse, I guess, is one way to put it, right? You're only down about $3.50. That's only a 5% hit. Realistically, you're almost back to just where you were in the middle of the day on Wednesday after they come out and tell everybody they're going to miss their numbers by a billion dollars. But guess what, folks? You're at 65 bucks. You were just at 165 less than a year ago. Okay, and look at this channel line. You're actually breaking back in within that channel line probably. There it is. Watch out, folks. Yeah, look at that thing, man. You break back within it. What are we doing? We're coming back up. We test it. Get near that area. And we're going to open today. 64 and change. 62.83. The recent lows from September 29th for AMD. See how some of the other chip companies. Yeah, NVIDIA is going to pay for that. They're down $6 this morning as well. And what's Taiwan? TS. TSM. That's right now. Uh, they're going to be down $3 as well. Tough one for the chips, man. Look at those charts. All of them in big trouble. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Well, we'll talk about OPEC, man. OPEC cuts going on. We talked about crude hitting $90. Uh, yeah, and it'll be interesting to see how the politics play out of this one for sure. Higher gas prices. That's another one that doesn't get talked about enough right now in terms of what's going on. The it's very fortunate, folks, what's happened with cruise prices. You could say that we've been very fortunate to dive from 130 almost, 123, we'll call it, okay, the highs back in June, to a price point of $75. I mean, in Florida, folks, we got gas at $3 right now. $3 we got gas. Now, that might not be the case over the last four or five days. Uh, four days, we've had crude go from 81 bucks up to 90 almost, but we do have a tax holiday going on in Florida. 25 cents is the tax per gallon usually in the state of Florida. That is gone for the month of October. So make sure you fill up those tanks if you got them in the month of October. Uh, but what happens, folks, if we have crude? Just, just doing a simple 382 bounce brings us up to $95, folks, okay? Look at where we, excuse me, look at where we kicked off the month. OK, you come into the month at about eighty one dollars and all month we're rising right now. And it's only October 7th. If we really get a spike. That could exacerbate things even more um, because energy, OK, is a big component. So here's here's the wild part. CPI. We all know this, but think about it, because CPI. You have food and energy, right? You take out food and energy, you get the core number. You know what's in the core number, though? Shelter. Shelter represent 40% of the core number. So what if we get some rising crude prices 
throughout the winter into 2023, that's going to cause the core number. No, excuse me. That's going to cause the headline number of CPI because food and energy is included in the headline, right? That's going to cause the headline to have some headaches for CPI. And meanwhile, we're going to have shelter driving up the core component. So you can't even take out food and energy and cite the core component of CPI as somehow a relief because shelter is going to be a big problem for core CPI. So keep your eye on crude, man. But $90 a barrel, I don't think we're getting any reprieves there. We'll see where the economy goes because the one thing that could tank that market is China having a big recession, uh, the zero COVID policy in China, and just a recession looming here and potentially in Europe. That could put a damper on the price of crude. But considering where we are and considering the geopolitics going on right now, folks, I mean, I have a headline pulled up. Uh, why not? We'll tease it and talk about it after the break. And there's not a lot to break down just besides of the outlier, hopeful tail risk, okay, that you're talking about. But you don't like to see uh, United States presidents trying to uh, quantify the probability of nuclear war, which is kind of what you're saying. Um, Putin threats real could spark nuclear Armageddon. You better believe it, man, with Putin, okay? I mean, he's shown, folks, um, there are some risks there. Hopefully, they're very, very t small tail risks, but they do exist, unfortunately, in this world right now. We'll be right back for the open, folks. In a time of booming inflation, where your purchasing power is eroded, there's no better place to protect the hard-earned money than in gold. Vista Gold's flagship asset is the Mount Todd Gold Project in the Northern Territory of Australia. This is Australia's largest undeveloped gold project. We are talking a world-class gold project in a tier one mining district. This is a large scale, low cost project with significant existing infrastructure in a politically safe and friendly mining jurisdiction. Vista Gold just completed the Mount Todd feasibility study, which resulted in a 7 million ounce gold reserve in a 16 year mine life. All of this combined with the approvals of all major operational as well as environmental permits. This distinguishes Mount Todd as an attractive, de-risk partner, ready development stage gold project. Vista Gold trades on the New York Stock Exchange under the symbol VGZ. TFNN is excited about our new software charting program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts. In collaboration with Tom O'Brien and using his best-selling book, The Art of Timing the Trade, Your Ultimate Trading Mastery System, David White has programmed an outstanding piece of software that will complement any trader's methodology. Using this first-of-its-kind program, The Art of Timing the Trade Charts allows you to scan thousands of stocks for Fibonacci formation setups, including Gartley's, ABC's, Butterflies, and much more. The Art of Timing the Trade Charts is designed to help you when scouring the markets for stocks just beginning to form the trading patterns that many investors spend days, weeks, or even months searching to find. And right now, we're offering licenses available at only $79 a month. We are so confident that you're going to love this new charting software that will even give you a 30-day unconditional money-back guarantee. Don't miss out on this incredible new piece of software. Get your copy of The Art of Timing the Trade Charts today by visiting TFNN.com. Sharpening your skills as an investor is like getting better at playing a musical instrument. You have to practice, sure, but you also need excellent instruction from experts. At TFNN, you'll get advice and guidance from the authority in technical market analysis. And it's not just dry, tedious text either. TFNN airs live financial content streamed live on TFNN.com and TFNN's YouTube channel with Tiger TV. Live every market day from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. Eastern. For free, each host is an experienced trader and gives their take on the market while taking calls and questions live from around the world. From the moment the market opens until the closing bell sounds, Tiger TV has eight different shows with expert hosts to help you make the right moves with your money. Watch online at TFNN.com or on TFNN's YouTube channel and become the investor you were born to be. TFNN, educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com.
Okay, folks, welcome back. We got markets open, and you look at an S&P down about 1%, 1.1% 1 .1 in the red right now, down 42 points. I imagine we're going to get some moves in both directions today, folks. We'll see where the day ends. It's going to be an interesting one with some important economic data out this morning. NASDAQ off 200 right now. We got the Dow off 259. And if we didn't have a Fed hiking cycle like we haven't seen in some time going on with the market freaking out about it, yield spiking and inflation out of control, this story would be getting a lot more, folks, attention than it's getting. Uh, Biden says Putin threats real, could spark nuclear Armageddon. And yeah, you know, you hear the rhetoric coming out, folks. I was reading an article earlier talking about how just in state media alone on Russia, they're allowing uh, more critique of things going on, never of President Putin himself, right? But more a more realistic portrayal to some degree of the uh, losses that they've had. Right. It's, you know, state media for a while was just cheerleading every success that Russia had. That is not the case right now. And if you try and use and I don't want to call it game theory because it's not a game, but to some degree it is in terms of the theory that you apply when you're in something like this, in my opinion. Right. There is a method to the madness of allowing a critique on state media. And it is not a good method in terms of what it may rationalize. OK, maybe there need to, needs now. This is my take. OK, but why would you ever allow something like that? OK, well, you allow it because public reaction is very tough right now in Russia. So Putin, a little worried about that, uh, realizes probably he can't just deny what is happening to a certain degree any longer, even though they deny it to a ridiculous degree on many occasions. OK, but what does that allow? It allows them to maybe um, do something a little bit more rash. That's a risk, folks, okay? That's one reason why you would allow it. As in the war isn't going like you thought. You have to use something maybe a little bit harsher. Maybe you have, I mean, God forbid, you know, just a, a tactical nuclear strike, whatever they are. The, the, you know, I mean, because Newton, uh, they've talked about it. He's not joking when he talks about potential use of tactical nuclear weapons or biological or chemical weapons because his military is, you might say, significantly underperforming. So he's creating that type of narrative um, yeah, and once they start, folks, you never know. And boy, you talk about a tail risk. Hopefully that does not come to be. Um, but it is out there. And it's not getting as much attention because of what's going on in the market, at least in financial circles. But that is a financial ris risk, folks. Yeah. Okay, let's check out some of the stocks and how they're opening this morning. We jump back to the charts, and we're getting a market sell-off. Not surprising, man. S&P is right back down to the lows. Say goodbye to 3,700, folks. We're at 3,704 right now, down 1.4%. NASDAQ 100, you're off a solid 2% right now. Dow off 1% at 29,660. And we got the Russell off one2 Crude continues to climb near about 90 bucks. We got gold off $12. Let's jump around to some of the currency action right now. So the dollar spikes to 113. So much for 110 on Tuesday, man. 113. We'll take a look at this on a longer term basis. Keep keep these channels on your radar, folks, because the dollar, the yield, crude prices, all of those three driving so much of what's going on right now. The dollar probably accelerating towards the higher part of that trend line, um, 114, 115 or so on the dollar index. Let's check out how the euro is trading this morning. You know, vice versa action. Euro trading off the top of that. We make it to a price point. Let me back that out. We make it to a price point of about parity. What did we get to? Yeah, 99, enough nines there. 9998 is where we get to. Uh, we'll call it getting to one. And just like that, we're back at 97.63. Pound US dollar, a little bit of a divergence in terms of what's going on there. Bouncing around towards kind of the bottom portion, but you got the pound at 111, man. We're going to get parity in the pound. We're going to get the euro at maybe 95, 90 potentially. Let's check out how the yen is trading. This thing's just been popping around. And there you go. You got the yen breaking above 145, man. Had a great conversation with our man Teddy Kegstat on Wednesday. And yeah, hard to deny that you might have some higher prices coming at you in the yen. That's a weaker yen, folks, coming at you. That's going to hurt the price of gold. Uh, you got a stronger dollar. You got a weaker yen. And this yen climbing up to right where... It kind of spiked lower on just some speak of intervention, not even an intervention, just some speak of intervention in Japan. Uh, but it erased all of that now as it just chops around near 145 in the dollar yen. And let's jump to notes and bonds. 111.15, we put it back on a short term. Let's put it on an hourly, going back about 20 days to see climbing towards that low of 110.19 within a point of that level right now. And you're talking about a yield right now on the 10-year, 
3.9%, we'll call it. 3.9%. What were we at? Were we at 3.66%, something like that? 3.9% of the yield on the 10-year. Uh, a quick one, to say the least. And let's take a look at up and down the line of the yields. The two-year, 4.3, climbing above that number, man. Higher rates coming at you. The 10-year at about 3.9%. The 30-year, 3.85%. Uh, green across the board in yield, folks. Up and down. And look at the one month even. Five basis points, man. Just huge moves across the board. Yeah, the two years up about five basis points. The one month's up about five basis points. The three years up almost seven. And the 10 year is up about six. All right, what else we have? New cars. So, you looking for a new car? They might be back in stock, but what are they going to cost you, man? Yeah. Getting into that. Cox Automotive found the new vehicle loan rate up was 7%. 7%. Let's talk about loads. It's going to matter for everything. My dad's used the expression, folks, I love it. You're only worth what your signature is worth. And this is an example of it. Okay. Many people don't buy cars for cash, especially recently, man. I mean, you were getting loans at 0%, 1.9%, 2.9%, right? Something like that. Uh, probably made sense to maybe use that debt. Not many times you can get a loan over a five, six year period, even a car loan for 2%, 0% in many times. Those car companies, when rates were at their lowest, not the case anymore, man. Uh, as you have rates boosting it up and you're talking about the new vehicle loan rate is 7%. <sighs> I mean, we, we've talked about housing, okay? But it's gonna matter in cars in a big way. And that's not even including the rising prices like they talk about. Uh, the average amount financed for new vehicles hit a record of 41,347. That's up from 40,000 during the second quarter, 38,000 a year earlier. The average monthly payment on a new vehicle above 700 bucks. That is a pricey automobile, folks, for an average you, you match it with the average wages, and that's a tough scenario, man. Used vehicle prices have been falling for most of 2022. Um, yeah, not surprising there, but guess what, man? You're going to have to take out a, a loan no matter what, right? Used vehicle index has fallen 13% through the middle of September. The average price of a financial vehicle, a uh, finance vehicle, is over 31000 a level closer to new vehicle prices than used cars and trucks. Wild stuff going on across the board. All right, what else do we have pulled up here? Credit Suisse, a quick reference to them. They're going to offer $3 billion debt buyback as they're dealing with their woes, and that continues. Seems like we got a headline every day. Um, and again, I would not be touching this one just yet. The debt buyback echoes a $5.4 billion offer made by Deutsch in 2016 as markets pummel the leader, though the calming effect was short-lived, right? Pay attention to that one, okay? Uh, they're following the, the framework of Deutsche Bank. And that's, I'm not sure, a framework you want to be following as a bank. S&P is holding right near the lows of 3,703, folks. Where do we get to? 3,700.25. Holding 3,700 for now. Stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back in three minutes. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. technology around us is changing every day. With so much happening, it can seem impossible to keep up with all the information. David White's investment newsletter, The Technology Insider, is designed to give you all the information you need to understand the technology that shapes today's markets and tomorrow's future. David White has made his living staying on the cutting edge of technology. 
His weekly newsletter will give you specific recommendations for value tech stocks, as well as entry prices, target prices, and stops to set for each trade. Dave delivers his weekly newsletters every Friday with updates throughout the week. You can get the Technology Insider at TFNN.com for only $37.50. Sign up for David's newsletter, The Technology Insider, and get an inside look at everything the technology sector has to offer. Try it risk-free today with our 30-day money-back guarantee. TFNN, educating investors. Will the S&P 500 continue to climb? For bold trades on U.S. large cap stocks in either direction, trade SPXL, SPUU, or SPXS. Direction's daily S&P 500 bull and bear leveraged ETFs. Direction leveraged ETFs. An investor should carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risks, charges, and expenses before investing. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus contain this and other information about Direction shares. To obtain a fund's prospectus and summary prospectus, call 866-476-7523 or visit directioninvestments.com. A fund's prospectus and summary prospectus should be read carefully before investing. An investment in the fund is subject to risk, including the possible loss of principal. The funds are designed to be utilized only by sophisticated investors such as traders and active investors. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps down 51 points, hanging out right above 3,700 right now. NASDAQ 100, you're off basically 2% right now, 11,314. The Dow off just more than 1%. Jumping around at some other data points from the jobs number this morning. Uh, one interesting one, job leavers, okay, as a percentage of the unemployed rose to 15.9%. So imagine they're leaving their job, okay? They're not getting fired. They're not getting laid off. They are leaving intentionally their job as a percentage of the unemployed rose to 15.9%, the highest since 1990. What does that reflect? Confidence on the part of quitters that they're going to find a better paying job. The job market remains way too tight, it should say, for the Fed. That is not what you see, folks. When you have people leaving paying jobs, during a recessionary slowdown where the Fed's trying to raise unemployment to bring, slow down a hot economy where inflation's out of control, not what you want to see at all. Now, what do we get in terms of economic data? Where do we go next? We get Fed minutes on next Wednesday, and then we get CPI data on Thursday, six days from right now. The market will look to those, the hiking cycle, though, I would say. Uh, it is set for the time being, folks. Uh, yes, I would say so. Yeah, hourly earnings came in broadly as expected, month over month, flat at 0.3%. Wages cooling a tad to 5% compared to last year. Uh, you know, it's a hot labor market, folks, in a big way. And I could just cherry pick some of these. It's interesting data across the board, man. Yeah, you had um, BlackRock out there. It's a reader, writer. And there's the last one I want to get to. This is a tweet from Mohammed El Arian. But this is the two-year yield. That's all this is, folks. Okay? Look at the spike we got going on in the two-year yield on that number. Let's click it and full full screen it, okay? Look at the run you had from where you were October 5th, 4.08. The two-year, 4.31%. The yield on the two-year right now. And let's check it out. Where are we talking about? There it is, 4.304%. But when you see it in terms of on a chart, man, what does that mean? That means the market says, hey, the Fed is hiking, man. The Fed is hiking, all this talk of the pivot, and there's the uh, acceleration lower from there, 36.92. So if you got retirement money, folks, you know, make sure you're comfortable if this market trades down to 3,200 or 3,000 because it's completely in the realm of things. We're not out of the work right now. We have people quitting work at a rate that is unseen since 1990. We have an un unemployment rate of 3.5%. We have inflation running hot. We got Fed minutes five days from right now we get cpi for the month of september six days from right now and all the markets pricing in is what the fed has already told us they're going to do which is 75 basis points that one's coming in at the beginning of november 
50 is the estimate for December, and then maybe we got 25 basis points next year. I think there's a lot of risk to the upside there. I think there's very little risk in terms of them not going to where they're going to go, that somehow these numbers turn around before they get in that final point and a half. It's nothing to say they, they have to stop there, folks. If we still see an unemployment rate of 3.5% and we have inflation running at 6 7 or 8%, they have to do it. Because you talk about numbers, man, compounding basis. Let's say you go to the grocery store and spend $100, okay? If you do one year of 8% inflation, it's at 108. You do two years of inflation at 8%, you're at 116. In three years, you're at 124. That's 25% inflation just by three years running at 8%, and that's not even compounding it, okay? We're approaching a full year of some big inflationary numbers soon. If they don't start to tame, we're going to get two years of big inflationary numbers soon, Okay, that is why, I mean, think about it, 25% over three years versus if you're at 2 to 3%, you're talking about that grocery bill going from 100 to maybe 105 over three years. Difference is you go from 100 to maybe 125 or 130. And that's just three years, and that number is not coming back down, man. Okay, these comps should be friendly, and they're not lining up friendly right now. And I'd argue that the market is reacting in similar fashion in terms of the pullback that we're getting right now as it's waking up to the fact that, hey, all of this rhetoric of Fed pivot, right? Everything we got this week with the jolts number. And listen, that jolts number, that's a good number, okay? In terms of it's a good number because it's a bad number. It missed by a million jobs opening, okay? That's the numbers we're going to have to see. Those are the numbers that we're going to have to see for the Fed to really take notice. We're not even close to there yet. You see it in the non-farm payrolls for the month of September, man. We're not even close. The NASDAQ 100 now off two and a third percent. The Dow now off 1.4 percent. The S&Ps off one and three quarters percent. There's some great yield opportunities right now, folks, especially if you have any type of investment portfolios on and you're close to retirement. I would really consider looking at some of those numbers because you're talking about on a two year basis at 4.3 percent. Uh, and, you know, you don't have to even go out that long if you don't want to, man. You got to go out six months to get 4.1 percent, man. Right now, with the market, what it's doing if you're nearing retirement, I'm shifting gears to like an investment perspective, but yields for the first time are at a pretty attractive level. And boy, we got some volatility coming down the line, folks. And it doesn't mean I would just take my portfolio and stick it in um, to that degree. But I've said my piece, man. There is a severe risk to the downside, okay? We are just back to where we were in June. And I've said it before. If on June, when the market was at 3,600, okay, this thing got way ahead of itself, obviously, trading up to 4,300, okay? But back in June, if you told me all the data we were going to get over a four-month period, if you told me that we would get September payrolls on October 7th and the unemployment rate would be 3.5%, we'd be adding 265,000 jobs and we'd have wage gain of 5% a year, right? I'd say, geez, I think the market's probably going to be lower than we're trading at right now in late June, because that's not how things are supposed to be shaping up four months into the things. That's not how things are supposed to be shaping up seven months into a hiking cycle that began on March 15th. But nonetheless, here we are at the same price point we were in June. And we're making very little progress right now. And what else do we have happening? We got crude coming back for us, man. That is not going to help the conversation, folks. Okay, if we have crude prices starting to rise again, which we do, coming into the winter that's going to cause prices to rise across the board. As we come into winter, you have crude back above 90 bucks. Okay? You've crude above where it was trading at in August. And remember, look where crude was when the market was at lows. Okay? That's a big component of why we've been helped here as well. What if that starts hurting us as well? Crude rising above $90 right now and this market's not stopping, man. Watch out. Today could be a tough one, folks. Um here, let's back things up to show. I mean, this could be something like the CPI because it's a little bit of a changer. Kevin Hinks, our man, we don't talk to him on Fridays. He calls this one the biggest data point of the month. And I would agree. It's got so much in there. And guess what? It is the month in terms of what else is more important than jobs, what people are making. Of course, spending's a big deal. Retail sales is always a big deal up there. Um, but sales are determined by the money that people have in their pocket, folks, from what they make. There's nothing like it. S&P is continuing to drop. Now off 71 points. NASDAQ 100 off 280. Uh, the day we got the CPI print, folks, okay, you had a bar that was 220 points wide. 220 points wide on the S&P. So 
Don't think uh, that things can't move pretty quickly. You're down 70 points off 1.9% right now. But we are still 115 points off of where we were trading at just a few days ago. When you put this thing on a weekly and zoom in on the action, we got a green bar right now. We got a green bar. I'm not sure that we'll end up with a green bar. And that's 115 points below where we're trading at right now. But guess what? Markets... Market's getting a little bit ahead of itself with this run from Sunday night up into Wednesday. And we'll we'll take a look at the Fibonacci numbers that we're talking about right now. S&P's down 1.9%, folks. One more segment. Come on back. We'll be right back. TFNN has just launched their new trading room, The Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. And now they are expanding their reach with The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. In The Tiger's Den, you can look over the shoulders of Tom O'Brien and the other TFNN hosts while they analyze charts during their live Tiger TV programs and join an interactive trading community with hundreds of members exchanging ideas. Interact with other Tigers and Tigresses as they share trading ideas, news analysis, and discuss the market action all trading day, even at night and on the weekends. The Tiger's Den at Discord is accessible on mobile or tablets as well, so it's always at your reach. To sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders, just visit the front page of TFN. NN.com. You might think that if you want to be successful at trading in the stock market, you're going to need a crystal ball. After all, it's impossible to predict the future, right? Like any endeavor in life, before you decide it's impossible, get some advice from the experts. You might find that it's not so impossible after all. For daily market overviews that give you direction on the key indices, selective stocks, and commodities, subscribe to the opening call newsletter at TFNN.com. The opening call newsletter is written by Basil Chapman, creator of the trading methodology known as the Chapman Wave. The Chapman Wave up-down sequence gives you an edge in identifying price turns, finding the peaks and valleys in stock prices. Get the opening call newsletter by Basil Chapman in your inbox every day. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know, and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. TFNN.com, educating investors. Everything in the universe is governed by the Fibonacci sequence. This mathematical principle is responsible for everything from the most aesthetically pleasing artwork to patterns in the stock market. To stay on top of stock patterns you can take advantage of, sign up for the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter at TFNN.com. When you subscribe, you'll get a weekly report from veteran day trader Larry Pesavento on stocks you need to pay attention to. And you can trust Larry's analysis. After all, he's got 45 years experience as a day trader. Larry will also provide daily charts, videos, and data on the key markets that he's tracking. Expect notifications from Larry on market movement you need to act on at any time. First-time subscribers also get a 30-day money-back guarantee. If you're not satisfied, let us know and you'll get a full refund within 30 days of signing up. Subscribe to the Fibonacci 24-7 newsletter today. TFNN.com. Educating investors. This segment is brought to you by Think or Swim. For more information, just click the Think or Swim banner on the front page of TFNN.com. Welcome back, folks. We got the S&Ps now off 72 points. That's 1.9%. Take a look on a Fibonacci, Fibonacci basis, folks, just from where we were Sunday night. Okay, the moves in this market, absolutely amazing. 250 points to the upside, just shy of that number, but 250 points to the upside. And just like that, what are we approaching now? What are we at? 100, 135 points to the downside. The 618, 3666. Watch out, 3666. That would be the 618 on the S&P. NASDAQ 100, pretty close in terms of where we are on the pullback. You trade up to 11,729. If you're looking for a possible Fibonacci area, 11,200, somewhere in that ballpark, 11,209. I'm not sure it's going to stop this market and its train, folks, right now at all, but we will see where you go from there. And uh, I talked about yields, okay? Whoops, that's not the one I want. 
There's the one I want. The two-year right now, 4.31%. You're talking about the six-month, 4.1% right now. Even on a three-month basis, you get 3.4%. On a one-month basis, you're getting more than 3%. The 10-year right now hovering at around 3.9%. And I talked about retirement. I talked about maybe potentially um, looking at yields. Just being prepared, folks, okay? Because guess what? This isn't going to be Armageddon in terms of the Fed, okay? We will get inflation under control. I think the chairman has his uh, mind dead set on that. That's what the market should be a little bit more freaked out right now about that. But they will get it under control, okay? The market will rebound, but we might have some volatility, man. We might have some volatility. Nothing to say that we can't back, trade back down to 3,200, folks. Um, nothing at all, as the market right now is down 74 points. As we continue to make lows, I think today's going to be a tough one, man. Even if you ask me right now, are we going to finish higher or lower from where we're at with the S&P down 75 points? I'd probably say lower. And we come into Fed minutes next week. They're not going to be friendly. We come into a CPI next week that's probably not going to be friendly as well. But I talked about yields, okay? Uh, Treasury I-bonds, folks. Check them out. You can only get them through this month at the rate that they're currently at. I think it's 9%, something like that. Um, I was going to pull it up. And uh, let's see where we're at. 9.62%. That is what they're at. You get them from Treasury Direct, 9.62%. They reset every six months. You got to keep it in there at least a year. You pay back a quarter of a year of interest. Check them out. You get that rate through this month, then they reset again. Check them out, folks, if you haven't already. $10,000 per person maximum is the max you can put into it. Stay tuned, folks. Basil's up next. Have a great Friday.